Many of our examples of American masculinity, be it in sports, military, law enforcement, the entertainment industry, the men that men look up to. A lot of what they're teaching is domination, aggression. There are these hyper-masculine figures that we try to adhere to. The average boy spends 40 hours a week watching television, sports, movies, 15 hours a week playing video games. The predominant male archetypes that we see in film and television and other forms of popular culture are the strong, silent guy who is always in control and is not emotional. And then we have the superhero character, the hero character, engaging in high levels of violence in order to maintain that control, in order to achieve whatever goal he has in front of him. We also have the archetype of the thug, and this is predominantly men of color who are pigeonholed into much more violent roles. And then we have the man-child or the mook, which is the male who's in perpetual adolescence. His body doesn't typically have a lot of muscle, but he tends to project masculinity in other ways through the degradation of women, engaging in high-risk activities, all they want to do is get laid. And of course, at the end, nobody gets anything because they get drunk, they take drugs. And there have been a whole rash of these movies recently that are funny. And so you're laughing at what you could become. Of course we know that media images have an effect on people's behavior. If there was no effect, the advertising industry would collapse because the advertising industry is based on the idea that media images will have an effect on people's behavior. The same kind of hypermasculinity that we see in Hollywood movies on television, they're the same kind of hyperviolence that we see in rap music and hip hop culture. The stereotype of being violent and dangerous, selling drugs, oversexed, it's all about money, power, and respect. A lot of rappers are imitating what they see as successful masculinity. Violent video games reinforce the stereotypical structures of what a man should be. The typical game character tend to be white males with, it gets this specific brunette hair, five o'clock shadow. When an emotion sneaks in for a male character, by and large, it is anger. And any sort of grief is very, very underplayed and never actually discussed or processed. Kids end up really looking up to this character, and what they end up idolizing is someone who cannot express themselves emotionally, cannot be honest or open with anyone around them. When you play video games and you see the same kind of setup, it loses its impact on you because you habituate to the sameness. The video game companies know this, and they are giving you endless variety, a new category, a new challenge. You're moving up ranks. They are creating this arousal addiction. Boys' brains are being digitally rewired to this technology. Things happen like this, microseconds. The ones that are most addictive are the most violent, where your job is to destroy the enemy, to dominate. If you don't have social connection and you don't have a lot of friends or you have a crappy home life, you can escape into a game and you don't have to worry because you're saving the galaxy. If your kid sits in front of a screen for four hours a day and shoots and kills in a repetitive, violent way, hundreds of people, there's a good chance that kid is gonna be impacted by that. There's a reason the U.S. Army trains people for combat by using video games. It's because it gets them used to some of the experiences. 
Well, put your 10 or 11 or 12 year old son in that context, but they're not going into Iraq or Afghanistan. And if they happen to live in a more dangerous neighborhood or a neighborhood where they're exposed to violence more routinely than they might be in some fancy part of town, then that's gonna be a bigger issue.